spring bear, one of my favorite pastimes, my favorite way to chip off the rust from a long ass winter. Hey, vlog style, we're going bear hunting. You know, I have a huge advantage living out west and being able to chase bears in the mountain every year, year after year, and guess what? It never gets old. Being in the mountains, watching the mountain come to life literally day after day, more snow melts, creeks start to rise, green starts to pop, and guess what? Bears start popping out. And this is a predator. This is predator management. This is spot and stock. This is some of the most fun and exciting style of bear hunting. And we can't wait to bring you guys along and show you what it's all about. I spotted a beautiful chocolate bear across the mountain and I knew I was gonna have a hell of a hike to get to him before dark, and so I went for it. In order to get to a bear across the canyon, it's gotta be in a spot where that you can keep eyes on it as you drop down in the canyon. You can bet you're gonna cross a blown out creek or river. So getting across those, you might have to pack waders or find a log to go over like I did. And then you can't really go straight up at the bear because the wind. So you really wanna get on their level, on their contour. So you usually have to take kind of a side angle and then relocate them is probably the most important step. Once you've relocated them, you can determine the wind and move in. This bear was no longer there when I got there but I did find a nice shed on my way hiking out I cut uh, mountain lion tracks and then I ran into some blood on the road and you wouldn't believe what I found see how it's drugged can you see how this has been drugged this this might have just happened Ooh, look at that There's a mountain lion kill, folks. I wish I had a trail camera, I'd set it up. Look at that. That is a mountain lion kill. After Alaska, I got back and couldn't wait to go to Idaho and do some bear hunting. So I uh, called up Jake, said, hey, do you want to come film for me? And uh, Jake said, hey, I actually have a bear tag too. And I was like, well, that's cool. Bring your bow. If I see one, I don't want to shoot. Maybe you'll want to shoot it. And Jake was stoked because Jake will shoot any bear that he can get an opportunity on. He's never killed a bear with a bow. He's killed a bear with a rifle. So we here. Welcome to Idaho. There's Jake. There's my inconspicuous truck. You'll never know it's mine. <laughs> we'll open up the cabin, get our gear dumped, head up the river, about an hour, cruise up, go find some bears. Welcome to the cabin. Jake's waiting. Hey, Jake. That's a lot of good green grass over here. That's way better than a couple weeks ago. That's right. Oh, dude, that's a good bear. We got a term, it's called Bear 30. That's, we see the majority of our bears from 4.30 p.m. on. That doesn't mean we don't hunt all day. Now what we'll do is we try to find areas where you have a giant master vantage in the morning and midday where you can glass for five, six miles. And you have majority of the day to make a move. And those places need to be where bears will pop in and out of cover intermittently and do like interval feeding. Those are good places, but evenings, 
you don't have the time to, you know, to, to really make a move at a master advantage like the one I was talking about. So we try to kind of move locations for the evenings into little smaller niche areas where it may only take you 20, 30 minutes to get to that bear. Finding bears is not the problem. It's getting to them with one of these. And so I recommend having two master advantages, one that's your primary majority of the day, and then your real specific secondary for evenings. And th those second ones are usually the ones where you're gonna get it done. side of him as soon as we go an inch further. Stay there buddy, stay there. We're gonna jam down to the matchsticks and then we'll cut up and get on his level. We found this bear way back in there, right, right below snow line. We know this area well enough to know what what the bears do, the trails they take, and what the wind does over there. So we got on that bear's level. We knew that we would lose sight of the bear once we made our move. Uh, so we did a big long circle, got on that bear's contour, and just worked in towards where we saw it last. And the bear did, hadn't gone far. In fact, he was asleep against a tree. And I stalked up into 44 yards. And uh, I studied the bear for a second, and I realized that I just didn't want to shoot this bear. And so I looked, and Jake was kind of off to my left a little bit. Um, filming and I was like, hey, do you want to shoot this bear? And he's like, say no more. So we had to take his bow off his backpack, dig out his release. Uh, meanwhile, I'm filming him and filming the bear with an iPhone and eventually he was able to come to full draw, get his first shot at a bear. All right, so Dan spotted that bear. We stalked in. The plan was, um, I'm the backup shooter, so Dan was gonna shoot that bear. Um, we sneak in, got good wind, went up the dick kicker hill to the top, got on his level, got across, and Dan picked him back up, and he was bedded kind of by the base of a tree, and Dan got to 44. Um, I was behind holding the camera and Dan studied him enough where he didn't want to shoot him. So I'm game to shoot any bear and uh, basically it was my turn to shoot. So Dan gave me the go ahead to shoot him. My bow is still on my pack. My release is in my pack and as soon as he gave me the green light I had to unclip my bag, set it down. At that point the bear stood up and kind of started feeding mulling around a little bit so I had to keep an eye on the bear because I'm only at 55 so I'm watching the bear getting my stuff ready to go and I kind of lean out I'm one leg fully extended one leg's tucked because we're on a bank like this and uh, he gave me kind of a quartering away shot and I drew back kind of settled and released the arrow everything felt good and I'm watching the arrow go and Dan's got it on his iPhone, but it looked like I was low based off of the impact and the bear turned. I kept my, my glass on him, watched him, watched him. He got up and he started just walking down the hill. So Dan went to go look for blood, get my arrow. I grabbed my stuff and headed across the hill trying to get out in front of him. He was on the move and he got out way in front of me, fed up, and it, he was probably 300 yards in front of me the whole time. There's no blood on my arrow, a little bit of hair, so I think that bear's good to go. This is VPA. Now they make a solid one, but this one is the loudest broadhead on the market, and I watched, and uh, it's the loudest sound I've ever heard. Screaming. At a bear, and the bear totally just popped out of the way. Um, so he just barely gave the bear a haircut so that cost you and then 55 yards you know that's that gives that's enough time for a bear to react so that kind of sucks for Jake 
he's gonna switch back to iron wheel solid 125 double bevel um, I'm shooting a single bevel uh, 125 so we're gonna try to find a bear Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jake. We didn't get a lot of time to get some bear hunting in, but we did get one more day, and I was able to get another stock in on a beautiful chocolate boar. All right, so headed down the road. Dan just picked up a big chocolate down in the bottom. Feeding in the bottom of this canyon, uh, which is interesting to me. I've never really stocked bears in the very, very bottom of the canyon, and so I didn't really know what the wind would be doing down at the bottom, but I could only assume it was evening that the wind would be following the water, the water going down, so I figured the thermals would be going down the creek. Well, we got down there, made our move, circled, got in tight, tight, I mean 43.8 yards, and the wind felt pretty good. The problem was I couldn't shoot the bear because the grass was so tall, and this bear was so lazy, it laid down on its belly while it ate grass. It was a sight to see. When the bear finally stood up, I came to full draw thinking the bear was gonna give me a broadside shot. Well, the bear only stood up to where its ass was facing me and then at 180, it smelled us and stared at us and then bolted. And uh, bow hunting is so maddening because you feel like you've made the most, you executed the most perfect stock. You're in your effective range. All this bear has to do is just stand up and be broadside and the game is over. laying down and eating as lazy so I couldn't get a shot. I ranged it at 43.8 several times and I could feel the wind kind of struggling. You figure this time of night you just be jamming down. And when, I, when you see a bear start doing that, it's not good. And uh, so then I was like, oh crap. So I took my gloves off, I was like, and then it stood up and when it stood up, Never, I mean, it stood up with its ass into us, never giving me a shot, and then it faced us. And I thought eventually it'd go back to feeding, but then it bolted, so that would have been a chip shot. Um, God, that was such a phenomenal stock. And yet, it doesn't work out. And I will say, like, I love bow hunting bears versus rifle, and I don't mind rifle bear hunters because I, you know, a lot of them have wolf tags and cougar tags, and they're out predator hunting and they can cover more range. And mad respect, I love that. But when they see their target and they shoot, their hunt's over. When we see a target, our hunt just starts, and we got to do this crazy canyon crossing thing, and I just can't get enough of it. I'm six foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sorry. I... <laughs> okay. You buying that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, look how much they have snow here, man. I don't even think all the bears are out yet, to be honest with you guys, but um, maybe we'll find one that is. You know, Jake and I, two years ago, so last year, Jake and I didn't bear hunt together. Why is that, Jake? Uh, I was distracted. So two years ago, Jakey boy and I found a beautiful chocolate right here, and uh, he gave us a slip. So we're going to look for him. Um, and then you went over there and then saw the mega black bear mm -hmm. chasing ladies. That was a really good day. We've had a couple good days. Let's see if we can turn today. And I found that giant deadhead in the bottom that you missed. Uh, I'll let you get it. <laughs>